when they start to get into disrepair, you feel very sad. Um, you know, people have uh, spent a lot of time and effort in, in putting these buildings together in the first place. Just for them to fall into into, into disrepair is, um, is is sad um, and disheartening. You know, we need to be conserving these buildings. We need to be helping them along the way. We need to be keeping what's historically important, not taking it away. You know, if, if funding were to go into education, training and skills to, to sort of pass on um, this information, then, you know, it would certainly go a long way to helping um, conserve the fabric of the, of the Derwent Valley. Yeah, my name's Andrew Churchman. Um, I run a small company that look after um, old listed and historic buildings. Um, basically, we, we care and repair. What I do came from having a, having a love affair, if you like, with old buildings. Um, we've always lived in old buildings um, and I always wanted to know how they worked. It's lovely to um, to get up in the morning and, and go to work knowing that you're helping to conserve something that's that's stood there for maybe two, three, four hundred years uh, and, and to go and use um, the traditional skills, the tools and the methods that maybe a stonemason would have used 300 years ago is just absolutely, it's just awe inspiring. It'd be nice if these old buildings could talk to you because they'd be able to give you a you know a good insight into who's worked on them and who's done what and, and why. But you know you can't a lot of the time. You have to you have to try and understand it and have to try and look back and, and put put you know things together um, and, and decide and make a make an educated guess on what's right for that on what's right for that building um, and don't do any any sort of damage to it. No, I, I just just wouldn't want to work in a work in an office. No, thank you very much. This is you know it's, it's a dream job, and I'm very fortunate that I've got a got something that I really really enjoy doing. It's it's a passion. It really is a passion to look after these these wonderful wonderful old buildings. There aren't enough people doing what we do, uh, and it would be nice that um, you know we could pass those skills on to people that are, that, that are coming after us in order that we can maintain these buildings for for years and years to come. Well, a, a, a friend of the family, we call, call him Uncle actually, he was the blacksmith at, um, at Bredsel, and I, I, I used to always, always be with him, but his main thing was shoeing horses. Um, I liked the blacksmithing and, and the horseshoeing as well, and, and, and that's, what, that's what did it. That's what made me decide. My name's Peter Oldno. Um, I'm Stephen Oldno's father. I'm, uh, I was a master blacksmith, uh, and Stephen served an apprenticeship with me. We, we've sort of changed, swapped roles. Um, as opposed to Stephen working with me and helping me, uh, we've, we've swapped around, and, and I help Stephen when he wants me. I, uh, I was at the locomotive works until I was 21. Then I had to do national service. They put me in the Royal Engineers and then they found out that I could shoot horses anyway, so I was sent to Germany and um, having, after two years, I came back and went back to the locomotive works. And then when things were almost were finished, I decided to come and open the old blacksmith shop here at Little Eaton. And, and it took off from there. The fire was on every day, all day. Very, very rare that I didn't want the fire. I was either making shoes, making horse shoes, 
doing tool repairs for their other foundries, um, tool hire firms, curtain rails. It was fire, fire, fire all the time. No, I think there'll always be some, uh, uh, there'll always be a requirement for this. Um, there's going to be there's going to be people that, uh, that that want to dirty their hands and and get the, get get the fingers burnt and and all that. I'm sure there is. If you go to a, a, a window or a, or a, a frame or whatever it is, and you take it out, and you know. That, that work has not been done, has not been touched for maybe 100, 150 years. And you know that the last person who touched that window and had anything work to do on it has been gone, you know, for quite a long time. And you and you, you take it apart and you put your hands, your fingers, where they put theirs, you know, to, to reconstruct it. You're taking apart and then you're going to put it back together again. And that's a continuity. And that's very satisfying. Uh, it's uh, Malcolm Seven. Uh, I own uh, Butterley Glass and I work with uh, Daryl Cook and we do uh, the restoration, conservation of uh, leaded glass, stained glass, uh, metal windows um, in all sorts of buildings, churches, uh, commercial buildings, um, private um, domestic uh, buildings. So um, it's, it's an interesting job. See, I've been doing this for so long now, over a quarter of a century, and in that time I've built up, um, a, you know, a knowledge myself, and also an understanding of people to go to and get to work with me to do the things, which is what I was explaining to you before. You know, if you're doing a piece of work, then you need various skills, and you can't be a blacksmith, and you can't be a, a, a sandblaster or an acid etcher, uh, well, you could do, but you're not going to get all, you know, you really want to go to those people because of, of those particular skills and the skills to, uh, to, to, to be able to zinc coat your work and then powder coat it for you and so on, because you're not going to do that on your own. But all those skills and all those things add up to the finished product. It took you quite a while to become established and a lot of the work that uh, Daryl and I get now, and this is a bonus of course of being uh, of combining, is that we both know an enormous number of people in this area and those people might only want us once in maybe a year or maybe two years or maybe three years but they will come back to us, their architects, builders etc etc uh, and other you know people who are in the glazing trade who don't do what we do. I've said many many times uh, you know, been extraordinarily lucky to work in lovely places. You know, you get here and you drive off up, up to uh, Bonsall or somewhere like that and work on the church and climb up on the roof and have a little ride. And then you, then you drive back down through this beautiful countryside. Come to, you know, it's lovely. How lucky to be able to do that. It really is. It's lovely to be able to do that. enormous amount of work and if you don't appreciate it yourself sometimes you wouldn't it's difficult for other people to do that isn't it <laughs> it really is I mean it, it, it's from we, we Darren and I were thinking just about that job last week and the number of of operations and the number of skills that are necessary to, to be able to do that job and not just ours lots of other people who uh, uh, and uh, well, you just hope that those skills will continue. <laughs>